Hello and welcome to a new vault log. In episode number 38 I did a review of this 60 watt dummy load and if you haven't watched that video there will be a link on screen right now. Today I'm going to be talking about the same 60 watt load but I'm going to do a reverse engineering of the circuit of this dummy load. So let's get started. This dummy load seemed quite interesting and I wanted to get a better understanding of uh, how it works. I went ahead and uh, I reverse engineered the PCB. First, I took photos of the top uh, of the of the main board because that's where all the stuff happens. This uh, small riser board just has the switch and the seven segment LEDs, so there's nothing interesting there. I then used a photo editing software to overlay a picture of the top and bottom side of this PCB and adjusting the transparency level on the top picture I ended up with something that looks like this image. It helps a lot with this kind of work to have a view of both top and bottom tracks at the same time. I then slowly rebuilt every track and component in Eagle CAD and uh, while doing so I was constantly marking on a printed picture the tracks I've connected with a marker pen. That is just to keep track of everything and uh, make sure I don't forget any connections. After a couple of hours of work and uh, some data sheets downloaded from the internet, I had all the tracks and all the components connected in a schematic, hopefully without too many errors. And uh, there will be a link to this schematic in PDF format in the description below. Now let's go through the different parts of the schematic and explain how I think they work but take note I might be wrong on some of these points and also there might be errors in my reverse engineer schematic so don't take all of this as 100% correct. There will be also parts of the schematic that I don't quite understand and uh, I encourage you to leave your comments below. We'll start with this section. This is the uh, DC input jack where you apply the 12 volts and it's this section right here. And uh, we can see we have some um, diodes for reverse polarity protection. These are Schottky diodes. And then we have some uh, filtering with these electrolytic caps. Next, the voltage is tapped once by this 7805 5 volts regulator providing power to the uh, front panel 7 segment display. The 12 volts is also used to power the uh, cooling fan which is in this section right here. The cooling fan is controlled on the uh, low side by this MOSFET. The fan has its own filtering with the help of this uh, inductor plus capacitor arrangement and also a uh, reverse polarity Schottky diode just to clamp the back EMF. Next, the same 12 volts input is tapped by this section which is uh, providing power to the uh, microcontroller. I'm not sure why they uh, needed a separate supply just for the microcontroller but I suspect they wanted to get lower noise on the ADC measurements so they have this separate supply which is going to be uh, lower noise than compared to this one right here which also powers the LEDs which are multiplexed and switching all the time. This TL431 adjustable precision shunt regulator is used to generate a stable 5 volt supply which is also the reference voltage on the ADC. This TL431 adjustable precision shunt regulator is used to generate a stable 5 volt supply which is also the reference voltage for the ADC inside the microcontroller. The TL431 on its own can only output 100 milliamps according to its datasheet. So this NPN transistor right here is used to increase the current output of the precision regulator. And you can find this um, type of uh, architecture detailed in um, an application note for the TL431. Moving on, in this section we have the single-ended voltage measurements. That's when you're only using two wires. So the voltage is 
tapped right here at the uh, power input pin on the P plus pin. And then we have a uh, voltage divider as well as a low pass filter with this capacitor. Although I'm not sure why they have the uh, VDDA voltage applied here. It's like they're trying to bias this uh, voltage measurement, but I'm not sure why they're doing that. This uh, VDDA voltage, it's the same um, regulated 5 volts that we talked earlier, the one that comes out of the precision shunt regulator, except that it goes through a small inductor and then it's uh, labeled VDD analog. We also have the temperature sensing here. The thermistor is uh, this one right here. We have it uh, stuck to the heatsink. And it's uh, in the schematic, it's placed in a simple voltage divider arrangement and followed with a, a low pass filter to get more stable readings on the ADC. Moving on, in this section, we have the uh, microcontroller. And uh, just remember, I didn't draw the display section. Those connections are just uh, marked here on the microcontroller pins on the right. We have a uh, bunch of decoupling caps, the crystal oscillator, and this uh, active buzzer, which seems to be AC coupled to the microcontroller directly, no transistor used. Next, in uh, this section right here, we have the differential voltage sensing used in the four wire measurement mode. And if you remember from the review of this dummy load, it's this white port right here. Once again, we have the VDD analog signal applied on the positive input of this op amp. It's, once again, I'm, I don't know why they're doing this. It's like, uh, to me, it's like they're trying to bias this input with uh, a voltage from VDD analog. And uh, right here, that voltage is tapped from this voltage divider. And the output of this op amp goes directly to the ADC inside the microcontroller through this low pass filtering for measuring the uh, voltage. Next, this is our main control loop op amp from uh, pin 18 of the uh, microcontroller marked timer 1 channel 1 we have a PWM signal which is then passed through these uh, two low pass filters to convert it to a smooth DC voltage and uh, this is the uh, current set threshold it uh, also goes through a voltage divider and is applied on the uh, positive non-inverting input of this uh, op amp this is uh, practically a low cost solution to generate a um, DC voltage because uh, the other option is to have a DAC on board, a um, digital to analog converter, but that is more expensive. Uh, just a couple of uh, SMD resistor and capacitors and a PWM uh, signal generator, which you already have in the microcontroller, and you can uh, create a DC voltage very cheaply. On the negative input, we have the feedback coming from the shunt resistor. The voltage is tapped from the shunt resistor through this uh, 10K resistor. On the output of this um, uh, op-amp, we have the uh, power MOSFET. And we see for reverse input protection, we have a diode in line with this transistor. And this one is actually the... Uh, uh, dual 15 amp uh, Schottky diode that is also attached to the heatsink. The output of this um, op amp is also tapped here and goes through this low pass filter and is then clamped with this um, 5 volt uh, Zener regulator here. So it seems the output of this op amp needs to go above 5 volts for this uh, transistor to to conduct and pull pin 19 of the microcontroller low. This is definitely used somewhere in, in software to sense when this happens and take uh, some decision. And I have some, I have a theory here because this dummy load also detects the uh, DC input voltage. And if it's not within the accepted range, it will uh, give you an error. 
and we see here this is the DC 12 volts input and it kind of goes in the same control loop on the inverting input of the op-amp and I'm wondering if they're not using at the same time the op-amp as a control loop with the shunt resistor and the set current and also as a comparator for the DC input voltage and they're just detecting if it's not within a certain range and pulling that uh, microcontroller pin low and more monitoring that in software to throw an error once that happens. There are two things I don't understand here. First is the configuration of this op-amp. I don't know why we have a capacitor in series with a resistor in the feedback loop. I mean, I have checked an op-amp uh, configuration book and I haven't found specifically this type of arrangement with um, capacitor and resistor in series on the feedback loop. So uh, if you have any idea why they're using this type of configuration here, please leave it in the comment section below. I mean, it could be filtering, but I'm not sure. Next, I don't know why they're connecting uh, pin 17 of the microcontroller which seems like an ordinary I.O. to the negative input through this diode. I mean, the diode is obviously there to prevent voltage from flowing back uh, into the micro, but what are they using that pin for? I don't know. It might also be related to the DC input uh, measurements. But as I said, this pin 17 looks like just an I.O. pin. It doesn't look like it has any analog function. And the last thing that uh, I wanted to show you is this um, VDD analog signal. As you can see, we have the 5 volts VCC generated from the TL431 precision shunt regulator, which goes through a simple uh, inductor for filtering, and then it becomes VDD analog. And actually, this inductor is just a, a coiled PCB track on this board, just to keep it uh, cheap and simple. They didn't uh, place an extra component in there, they just wiggled a track on the PCB and they created a small value inductor like that. So that's about all I could figure out on my own about this circuit. Not a very complicated one, but it does have some nice features implemented, which makes it a very nice dummy load compared to others I've seen previously. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching this and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.